Okay, so we're finally ready to state the fundamental theorem of calculus. I've got it sort of stated informally here on the board. Um, one piece of information missing here. Um, the curve needs to be smooth, or at least piecewise smooth, but also it has to be oriented. All right, so you have to have some notion of the beginning and the ending of your curve. Fair enough, um, right? Because we do f at the end point minus f at the initial point. That's what you're seeing here, right? Final minus initial, just like the fundamental theorem of calculus in one variable that you see in Calc 1. Um, and in fact, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus is true because of the fundamental theorem from Calc 1, right? So this is, it, it's a direct consequence of the fundamental theorem of calculus um, that you all know and love. And, and the way you see this is, so here's kind of a, a sketch of a proof, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to consider a parameterization. So we're going to use, let's say, R going from T0 to T1. Going to, well, going to C. Maybe I should say going to Rn. Let's say it goes to C, right? So, and C is sitting inside of, well, R3 in our example. Okay, so we've got our parameterization. Um, we want R at T0 to be P. We want R at T1 to be Q, right? We want it to match the orientation of our curve. And so given this function f, and there is one more thing I guess that we need to know about f. Um, f has got to be continuously differentiable, right? So we want f to be continuously differentiable so that the gradient is continuous. Um, so we're integrating a continuous vector field here, which guarantees the existence of the line integral, okay? So f is a C1 function. Um, R, we're going to assume, that, of course, R is a C1 parameterization, right? We're going to work with, we're going to do a proof for a smooth curve, and then we'll talk about how to turn this into a proof for piecewise smooth curves at the end. Um, so everything is C1, and that means that you could consider, consider the function h of t given by f of r of t, right? So that's a function from r to r, right? It's a real valued function of one variable. Um, and we also know that h prime by the chain rule we know that h prime of t is the gradient of f at r of t dotted with r prime of t, which should look familiar, right? It seems like maybe we're on the right track because, well, what can we do? We can do this. We can say that the integral, this integral along c, of f dot dr, um, where I guess I should say f is the gradient, sorry I'm used to writing f all the time. So the integral of the gradient, this is going to be the integral once we parameterize integral from t0 to t1 of gradient of f at r of t dotted with r prime of t dt. Yeah. We're just using this rule here with f equal to the gradient, and so that's what we get. But, um, but that's just h prime. So it's the integral from t0 to t1 of h prime of t dt. And now the fundamental theorem of calculus from calc 1 says that this is h at t1 minus h at t0. But what's h at t1? h at t1 
is f at r of t1, h at t0 is f at r of t0, okay? And what's r at t1? Well, we're choosing our parameterization so that r at t1 gives us q, which is x1, y1, z1. And r at t0 gives us p, which is x0, y0, z0. So we have exactly what we want, right? This gives the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it is the fundamental theorem. It's just the fundamental theorem of calculus written in a slightly different context, right? It's still the same old fundamental theorem of calculus from Calc 1. Um, we're just looking at it in, in a slightly different context, but it's the exact same result. Um, okay, uh, so I think we'll, we'll pause here. We'll do a few examples related to the fundamental theorem. Um, we'll talk a bit about path independence and other things like that before we move on to Green's theorem.